I am calling the St. Louis County Council meeting to order Tuesday, March 30th. The hour is now 630. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the flag to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, of America and to the republic, to the republic for which it stands, one nation one under nation God, God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, with liberty and, justice and justice for all. all. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes, ma'am. Council Member Days. Here. Council Member Dunaway. Present. Council Member Fitch. Here. Council Member Webb. Council Member Clancy. Here. Council Member Trakas. Present. Council Member Harder. Present. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. And for the record, please note that uh, Councilwoman Webb had a personal um, emergency and she will not be attending the meeting this evening. Uh, is there a motion for approval of the journal of March 23rd, 2021? So moved. Is there a second? Second, Clancy. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. no. Motion carries the journal of March 23rd, 2021 is approved. We have no beta openings this evening, so we will move to communications. Madam Chair, we have no tax compromises this evening, so we will move to zoning matters. Under zoning matters, item number <laughs> one, sixth district. City file, the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number two, seventh district. Receive and file. So ordered. We have no vote and bridge matters this evening, so we'll move to other communications. Under other communications, item number one, first district. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number two, sixth district. Receive and file. So ordered. Item number three, seventh district. Receive and file. So ordered. Item number four. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number five. Receive, file, and the issuance of a request for proposal be approved as requested. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number six. Receive, file, and the issuance of a request for proposal be approved as requested. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number seven, fifth district. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number eight, seventh district. Uh, receive and file. So ordered. Item number nine. Receive file and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, and that will be the order. Item number 10. Receive file and the county council be, uh, be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. That will be the same motion through item number 13, and that will be the order. Madam Chair. Uh, Councilman Harder. Yes, I'm having some technical difficulties. I'm going to bump out and bump back in here. So if you get to any of my district, I'll come back and towards them again. All right, thank you for that note. Item number 14, fourth district. Receive file in the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Item number 15, sixth district. Receive file contract in an amount not to exceed $3,337,603.34 be approved and awarded to Pavement Solutions LLC, the lowest responsive bidder. As recommended, an authorization for revision of the existing traffic control devices be approved as requested. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. no. Motion carries. Item number 16. Receive and file and that will be the order. 
Item number 17. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number 18. Receive, file, and the appointment be approved as recommended. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, no. Motion carries. Moving to add ons, Madam Chair. Item number one, second district. Receive, file, and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number two, fourth district. Receive, file, and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, and that will be the order. Item number three, fifth district. Receive and file. And that will be the order. Item number four, sixth district. Receive, file, and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number five, sixth district. Receive, file, and refer to the council as a committee of the whole. So ordered. Report of special committees. Yes, Madam Chair. This is the amended report of the Public Improvements Committee meeting. Receive, file, and adopt the report as submitted, and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation to amend the recommendation of the Planning Commission as recommended by the committee. Is there a second? Second, Trakers. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. We're moving on. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Moving on to our public forum this evening. We have how many speakers? Six. We have six speakers this evening. When your name is announced, please listen for the clerk to ask you to begin speaking and then state your first, last name, and zip code for the record. Uh, the clerk will re remind you when your three minutes are almost up. Uh, and with that, let's move on to our first speaker. Our first speaker this evening is Josh Sher. Right, thank you, Josh Sher, 63011. I want to thank... I want to thank Tim Fitch, Mark Harder, Shalonda Webb, and Rita Days for everything they have done to push back against tyranny thus far. This message is not for Adolf Hitler or Eva Braun, a.k.a. Sam Page and Lisa Clancy, nor is it for the dirty deep state sellout Trackus. I'd like to directly address Ms. Shalonda Webb and Rita Days. Although we may not agree on everything, I want to thank you both for your leadership and willingness to work with Mr. Fitch and Mr. Harder on certain issues. When America passed the Patriot Act after 9-11, we surrendered our Fourth Amendment rights in the name of safety. A year ago, we surrendered our rights to breathe fresh air in the name of safety. In April of 2020, I predicted that once we gave this up, there was no going back. Was I right? Two weeks to flatten the curve. And look where we're at today. Do you know what's next? Mandatory vaccine passports. Look at China, UK, Canada, and now New York, all in the name of safety. Mandatory vaccines in the free world. Know why the fraud, fraud Fauci and Page are pushing for at least 70% of our community to be vaccinated? Because that's the magic number where the vaccine passports actually have a real chance to ruin everyone's lives. I am still in disbelief we are living in modern-day Germany, and it should scare the absolute hell out of each and every one of you, for your family, your friends, and the people you represent. Freedom is not safe. Freedom is hard. Freedom is having the ability to make your own choices and having personal responsibility. Isn't that what you want? Isn't that what you want for your families? Isn't that what you want for the people that you represent? I'm addressing you, Ms. Days and Ms. Webb, because I can see there is common sense and willingness to fight for our freedoms. I plead with you to continue conversations and action with Mr. Fitch and Mr. Harder to work on restoring our community's God-given rights to each and every one of us. And I want to emphasize God-given rights, not government-given rights. I promise every single one of us will reach the precipice at some point. Most are well past it and are now looking to move out of the county. How far are you willing to let them drag you down until you act? How many freedoms are you willing to give up until you can no longer make your own decisions? Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Our next speaker is Tom Sullivan, followed by Johanna Bodian. Tom Sullivan, 63130. I have some things to mention. First of all, the council needs to make progress in getting a new county auditor. One is badly needed. There are numerous areas where a competent auditor can be helpful, especially with the nearly $200 million more the county is expecting from the government. Second, there needs to be an explanation of what's happening with the mediation between the county and the developers of the old Northwest Plaza. A mediation agreement was signed on February the 3rd, 2020, with the Denton's law firm representing the county, but no word of what's been going on. The first contract with the law firm was not to exceed $75,000, it has now been increased three times and is now up to $275,000. Third, sent the council the request for proposals that was sent out for the redevelopment of Jamestown Mall. The RFP was sent all over the country, but only received two responses. One was withdrawn, leaving just one. I do not think this is being handled well at all. The Economic Development Partnership is badly in need of oversight from the council. Fourth, Council needs to get more involved with what's going on at the county jail. The problems just never seem to go away. The new director seems committed, but has quite a lot to deal with. According to recent figures, there are 310 inmates at the jail who've been waiting over a year to have their cases heard. Of the 310, 118 have been waiting more than two years. Fifth, whatever happened to the North County Recreation Center that was to be part of the deal for the convention center expansion? It was nearly two years ago that this was a front page story. So where's the recreation center? This council has been in the slow lane for the past year. It's time to start dealing with issues that need to be addressed. Thank you for listening to my comments. Thank you, sir. Um, our next speaker is Johanna Bodian, followed by Jason Moore. Thank you. This is Johanna Bodian, area code or zip code 63005. Um, thank you to the St. Louis County Councilor, Council members Harder, Fitch, Webb, and Days. Tonight I'd like to address the full council and county executive page. The residents and businesses of St. Louis County have been abiding by the health department orders for a full year now. The businesses and the citizens' tax dollars fund many parts of our communities, including our schools. With the decline in taxpayers having the ability, both businesses and private citizens, to pay their taxes, our school district's budgets are suffering. I know Rockwood alone, as I've watched their board meetings this past year, and most recently in February when they did their budget update, is behind an unsure if they will be able to collect over four and a half million dollars of property taxes, mostly from commercial real estate. The Department of Public Health and the county executive are unable to provide specific measures to us as the public, to our businesses who are still closed at some capacity, and to our schools, leaving us un leaving this unknown in terms of what the after effects will be. You need to get measures in place so that as a community, we can start planning how we recover from this pandemic. The lack of transparency or maybe just pure ability, I don't know, I, I hope to God, our elected representatives and appointed health department officials are not that stupid, but perhaps they are. You need to be able to provide this information. And I thank um, Mr. Harder for the letter to the county health department where are bringing the transparency to the general public that he also is unwilling or unable to answer these questions. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Our next speaker is Jason Moore, followed by Leslie Fogarty. Hello, good evening. Jason Moore, 63021. Uh, so I just wanted to, to say, I, I'm sorry I missed you everybody last week. I was actually my 19th wedding anniversary 
one year into the lockdown that we're still going on through to today. Uh, I just wanted it to say that I did submit three different sunshine requests to the county, one to the uh, to the county council, one to Page's office, and one to uh, Miss Orwick's office. I received identical replies. We don't have the documents. The reason behind all three sunshine requests is to figure out and find out how the planning was performed to do the the January fifth election to put our selection of Clancy and Trachis in charge of the county council because that then proceeded to create a lot of grief and now we have to back rev all of these contracts that were then signed illegally because of the illegal actions of this of this uh, council. The other thing I'm going to bring up is Dr. Khan and it looks like we have just another uh, empty seat that's just not being totally honest with our elected officials and giving proper metrics on what he believes is going to be the magic number to open things up again. Are, is it 50 people that are infected or as little as one person to, get, to uh, be infected and hospitalized? We don't know. Nobody gives us an answer. And here we are over a year out. The, count, the county is still in dire straits for its businesses and our kids. We are still having mental emergencies, psychological breakdowns of our children. And I see uh, Dr. Page sitting there and you know he's probably gonna laugh this all off later on over a beer or a scotch at home in the comfort of his home. Believe me, sir, None of this is, is friendly for us. None of this is fun. You have wreaked havoc for the last year over everybody. And for what? Not a whole lot. The next, the next is the $193 million that are going to soon be delivered by the federal government to the council, to the county. I want an assurance, not a peaky promise, that there is going to be direct oversight over every penny that comes in to the councils or to the county's coffers. We cannot repeat what's gone on up till, up till now. Now I'm going to be heading out to Jefferson City tomorrow to testify for HB 75 because we will return order. So none of this ever happens again to anybody else across the state. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Leslie Fogarty, followed by Suzanne Burley. Um, every town is a border town right now. As anyone who does not solely watch the mainstream media propaganda machine knows, the southern border is wide open and people from many countries are pouring into our country. Many of these people have been identified as being on terror watch lists, previously deported murderers, rapists, and those helping bring these people to the border are sex, drug, and human traffickers profiting immensely from this business. Many are not being tested for COVID or any other diseases for that matter, and are being freely released and transported to areas around the country and the media and the Biden regime are blatantly lying to the American people. The elites have walls and armed security, including the ridiculous fencing around the Capitol, while they allow anyone and everyone to cross our southern border. Just last week, Councilman Harder expressed his concern regarding giving county employees raises due to a deficit in tax revenue. Sam Page says he cannot open the county until cases have significantly gone down, but refuses to quantify what that number is. But if we bring in people in from around the world with God knows what kind of diseases, are we to expect to never open up masks forever? Is that the master plan? We all know these lockdowns are strictly about control as there is no scientific evidence that masks work. Is anyone on this council aware of any of these illegal immigrants being brought into the county? 
laws are not being enforced as it is, and to bring in more people, much less non-citizens that do not pay taxes, who will flood the medical and school systems, increase crime, is something I would hope most residents would not be in favor of. I would like to know if you expect this crisis to impact the county, and if so, what are your plans? I'd like to know as that may impact on where I might want to live going forward. And on another quick note, I was looking over the bills being addressed in tonight's meeting and one stood out to me. I'd like Councilwoman Clancy to provide information regarding her proposal for legislation to promote voter participation. The last election had the most voter turnout in 100 years. So how was participation inhibited and what steps are you proposing to increase this participation? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And our final speaker this evening is Suzanne Burley. Can you hear me? We can, please proceed. Thank you, Suzanne Burley, 63123. Um, tonight, as I call in, I hear my own name announced by Diane, and I wonder if you all think, oh boy, it's her again. I know I sure do. Um, I'd like to not have to call in and repeat myself for the same items week after week, but it seems that's the game we're going to play. So the first thing I want to say is I really would like to see in-person meetings start. Um, this week, I saw some posts from our governor um, I think he was meeting with people about feral hogs, if I remember correctly. And in the pictures, there were people that were shaking hands. They were smiling. It, it was just refreshing to see um, people just being around people again. So I'm really hoping that that's something that we're working towards. Um, secondly, I'd like to bring up the response that I saw from Dr. Khan to uh, Mr. Harder about uh, what are the numbers, still we don't have an answer. And we don't have any idea what we're going towards. Um, and when you're left without any answers, you kind of start to make up your own answers. Um, or you just decide that people don't have it and you stop listening. And I'm seeing more and more people doing that. They're stop, they aren't listening anymore. They have nothing to work towards because we don't know. Um, the other item is again, the oversight with $193 million. Um, to not have oversight for that amount of money, it's crazy. Um, so hopefully we're gonna revisit that. We need eyes on how that money is going to be spent. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up is an article um, that I just saw like 20 minutes ago um, that um, the data that has come in, and I'm not going to give the source yet, but the data that has come in, um, it, it's telling us that there is 100% effective against serious ICU level disease and death. That That's the thing that's really key. We're turning a potentially fatal virus into the common cold. That's it. It's from a Wash U doctor. KMOV uh, posted that. So KMOV is, and Wash U is recognizing that this virus is becoming a common cold. It's time for us to wake up and start making some changes. I have 22 seconds. I'll just leave that as a reminder that I really hope we're working towards in-person meetings. I think it's important that we're all in front of one another when we share our comments. Thank you for listening. Thank you, ma'am. Madam Chair, that was the final speaker. Thank you. Thank you to all of you who have come forward and expressed your views and concerns with us. We really appreciate that. And uh, we look forward to your participation in the future. Report of the County Executive, please. Thank you and good evening, everyone. First, a quick thank you to the council members for meeting one-on-one -on -one with me to discuss your priorities for how the county should spend the funds it will receive from President Biden's America Rescue Plan. I look forward to these conversations continuing, especially as we get more guidance from the federal government 
on how we can use these badly needed funds for our community. As I mentioned in a letter to each of you last week, these new funds present tremendous opportunities accompanied by the significant responsibility of spending them wisely. As with the CARES Act funds we received last year, it's my intention that the ARPA funding be spent with a special emphasis on addressing the impact of COVID-19 on vulnerable and underserved populations, particularly the African-American community and people with chronic health problems. Saving lives through the thoughtful and serious public health strategies, helping our residents meet their basic needs during the pandemic, and reviving our economy were the county's top priorities with the CARES Act funds. My commitment to these three priorities remains strong, but we are entering a new phase of this pandemic. We hope this new phase will be less emergent, allowing us to think more long-term and more big picture. We will still need to invest in public health resources and humanitarian aid, but this new phase will also involve getting people back to work, fully reopening, and growing our economy for the future. Building an economy capable of sustained, equitable growth will require us to assist previous, previously existing businesses in safely reopening and to help new businesses that were founded during the pandemic find resources they need to thrive so that they keep the new jobs that they are creating right here in St. Louis County. And we will need help to, for disconnected workers to find a dignified pathway back into the workforce, whether that means improving their existing skills or developing new ones. If we maximize the impact of the ARPA funds, the St. Louis County of the future will be more stronger, more dynamic, and more equitable. Through our initial discussions, I know that those are among your priorities as well. I look forward to working collaboratively with the Council to identify the best ways to achieve these goals. Meanwhile, I've written to Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen asking her department to provide timely, consistent, and clear guidance on the use of the ARPA funds. Once my office receives a response, I will share with the Council to ensure that we all have the same understanding of how the monies can be properly spent. Before I close, I'd like to remind our residents of the County's COVID-19 Emergency Rental Assistance Program. St. Louis County received $29.7 million from the federal government to help those who have struggled to remain in their homes during this pandemic. These are funds in addition to CARES and the ARPA. A call center opened yesterday to answer questions prior to the program officially launching on Monday when applications can be submitted. Call center number is 314-806-0910. The program will provide back rent and temporary rental assistance to low and moderate income households that have had a loss of income, have qualified for unemployment benefits, face significant costs, or experience financial hardship due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The program is limited to St. Louis County residents. Details of the program can be found at sdlcorona.com, and I encourage each council member to share this information with their constituents. That's all for now, thank you. Introduction of bills. Proceeding with introduction, Madam Chair. Bill number 89, introduced by Council Member Fitch, an ordinance amending Chapter 716, Title 7, St. Louis County Revised Ordinances 1974 as amended, Petty Offenses Code, by repealing and reenacting Section 716.180 pertaining to penalties. Bill number 90, introduced by Council Member Days, an ordinance amending Ordinance Number 27,000. 580 by repealing and reenacting section one pertaining to a grant from the Bayer Foundation for support of the mental health treatment initiative program of the family court. Bill number 91 introduced by council member days an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $3,000 from the United States Food and Drug Administration appropriating the same for support of the Department of Public Health's participation in the virtual HACCP training project of the Retail Standards Grant Program and authorizing the Director of the Department of Public Health to execute necessary documents. Bill number 92, introduced by Council Member Days, an ordinance approving acceptance of donation of $250,000 from the St. Louis Police Foundation, appropriating same for support of a specialized training program for the Police Department 
and authorizing the superintendent of police to execute necessary documents. Bill number 93 introduced by council member days an ordinance amending ordinance number 27,872 by repealing and reenacting sections one and two pertaining to a grant from the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services for support of the Department of Public Health's Epidemiology and Laboratory Capacity ELC CARES project. Bill number 94 introduced by council member days an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a contract with Access Engineering LLC for consulting engineering services related to the Midland Boulevard East resurfacing project AR-1471 and authorizing the Director of Transportation and Public Works to execute necessary documents and revisions to the schedule of work activities. Bill number 95 introduced by Council Members Fitch and Harder an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a contract with EFK Moen LLC for consulting engineering services related to the new Ballin Road resurfacing project AR-1747 and the Weidman Road resurfacing project AR-1743 and authorizing the director of transportation and public works to execute necessary documents and revisions to the schedule of work activities. Madam Chair, that is all the bills. Thank you very much. Moving on to perfection. Bill number 20, introduced by Council Member Harder. Please hold bill number 20. Bill number 20 is hailed. Bill number 32, introduced by Council Member Trakas. You're on mute, Councilman Trakas. Following your lead, Chairwoman, excuse me for that. <laughs> um, I move to hold bill number 32. Bill number 32 is held. Bill number 266 introduced by council members Fitch and Harder. I move to hold bill 266. Bill number 266 is held. Bill number 267 introduced by council members Fitch and Harder. I move to hold bill 267. Bill number 267 is held. Bill number 75 introduced by council member Dunaway. Please hold bill number 75. Bill number 75 is held. Substitute bill number one for bill number 77 introduced by council member Clancy. Um, please hold. Uh, substitute bill number one for bill number 77 is held. Bill number 78 introduced by council member days. I move to perfect bill number 78. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. And those opposed, no. The motion carries. Bill number 78 is perfected. Bill number 79, introduced by Council Member Days. I move to perfect bill number 79. Is there a second? Second, harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Bill number 79 is perfected. Bill number 80, <clears throat> excuse me, introduced by Council Member Dunaway. I move to perfect bill number 80. Is there a second? Second, harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries, bill number 80 is perfected. Bill number 81, introduced by council member Trakas. Move to perfect bill number 81, please. Is there a second? Second, harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries, bill number 81 is perfected. Bill number 82, introduced by council member Trakas. Move to perfect bill number 82. Is there a second? Second, harder. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries, bill number 82 is perfected. Bill number 83, introduced by council member Harder. I move to perfect. Perfect bill number 83. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Bill number 83 is perfected. Bill, <clears throat> bill number 84 introduced by Council Member Trakas. Madam Chair, we have a substitute bill. Uh, please read the uh, substitute bill. 
Substitute bill number one for bill number 84 introduced by council member Trakas, an ordinance authorizing the county councilor to execute a contract with Lewis Rice LLC to provide legal services to St. Louis County. Madam Chair, if I may have a moment. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, this bill and the next three bills seek, simply seek to authorize the county councilor to re-enter into agreements with outside legal counsel for the sole and express reason of continuing to represent the county in lawsuits that have already been started um, and filed against the county by inmates and or family members of inmates at the Justice Center alleging civil rights violations, county employees alleging employment discrimination, police department employees concerning discipline problems, and COVID-related issues such as the expenditure of relief funds we're about to receive. Nothing in these bills speaks to public health orders by the director of the health department or the county executive. These bills are not a blank check as has been alleged. The sub bills prepared at my request clearly limit the contracts to one year unless they are reauthorized by this council. As noted earlier, um, or excuse me about that, as will be noted, I agree with the chairwoman um, concerning the referral of this issue to a committee of the whole, and I expect these bills to be part of that discussion. As such, um, Madam Chair, I move for the adoption of sub bill one for bill number 84. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, done away. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The substitute for a number one for bill number 84 has been adopted. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I will hold, move to hold substitute bill number one for bill number 84 until we have a uh, committee of the whole. And that is held. Thank you. Moving on to bill number 85, introduced by council member Trakas. Madam Chair, we have a substitute bill. Please read the substitute bill. Substitute bill number one for bill number 85, introduced by council member Trakas, an ordinance authorizing the county councilor to execute a contract with Littler Mendelssohn PC to provide legal services to St. Louis County. I move for the adoption of substitute bill, bill number one for bill number 85. Is there a second? Second, Dunaway. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The substitute for bill number 85 is um, adopted. The substitute is adopted. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I move to hold substitute bill number one for bill number 85. Uh, substitute bill number one for bill number 85 is held. Thank you. Bill number 86 introduced by council member Trakas. Madam Chair, we have a substitute bill. Please read the substitute. Substitute bill number one for bill number 86 introduced by council member Trakas, an ordinance authorizing the county councilor to execute a contract with Hepler Broom LLC to provide legal services to St. Louis County. I move to perfect, I'm sorry, I move to adopt bill number, sub bill one for bill number 86. Is there a second? Second, Dunaway. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Substitute bill number one for bill number 86 is adopted. I move to hold bill number 86. Bill number 86 is held. Thank you. Bill number 87 introduced by council member Trakas. Madam Chair, we have a substitute bill. Substitute. Substitute bill number one for bill number 87 introduced by council member Trakas. An ordinance authorizing the county councilor to execute a contract with outside counsel to provide legal services to St. Louis County in disciplinary matters of the Department of Police. I move for the adoption of substitute bill one for bill number 87. Is there a second? Is there a second? Sorry, second, done away. Discussion please, Madam Chair. Discussion, uh, Councilman Fitch. Uh, you know, I, I just want to um, say that I am voting for these substitute bills, but in no way Am I going to support any of these for the way that they are written? I respectfully disagree with my colleague, uh, Councilman Trinkus, that, that these are not blank check bills. They are blank check bills. The only thing different in these sub bills is that there's a one-year cap on how much 
uh, are, there's no limit to how much they could spend, only an hourly min, uh, a minimum, a maximum. There's absolutely no cap on how much in that particular year they could spend. Is it 10,000? Is it 100,000? Is it half a million? Is it a million? Uh, so those are all part of, need part, be part of the discussion uh, in our committee of the whole. So I, I just wanted to put that in there. And I didn't want anybody to think because I was voting in favor of adopting the substitutes that I was in favor of the actual language currently written in these four bills. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any further discussion? It has been moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, no. Substitute bill number one for bill number 87 is adopted. Councilman Trakas. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as with the other bills, I move to hold substitute bill number one for bill number 87 pending the Committee of the Whole. Substitute bill number one for bill number 87 is held. Thank you. Bill number 88 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to hold bill number 88. Bill number 88 is held. Moving on to the final passage. Bill number 320 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to hold bill number 320. Bill number 320 is held. Bill number 14 introduced by Council Members Trachis, Days, Dunaway, Fitch, Walton Gray, Clancy, and Harder. I move to hold bill number 14. Bill number 14 is held. Substitute bill number one for bill number 76 introduced by council members Dunaway and Harder. Please hold substitute bill number one for bill number 76. Substitute bill number one for bill number 76 is held. Bill number 220 introduced by council member Trachis. Please hold bill number 220. Bill number 220 is held. Bill number 69 introduced by council members Clancy and Dunaway. Please hold bill number 69. Bill number 69 is held. Bill number 70 introduced by council member Clancy. I move for final passage of bill number 70. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Harder. Roll call, please. Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Webb. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Madam Chair, on bill number 70, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 70 is finally passed. Bill number 71, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for a final passage of bill number 71. Is there a second? Second, Carter. Second. Roll call, please. Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Webb. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Madam Chair, on bill number 71, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 71 is finally passed. Bill number 72 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of bill 72. Is there a second? Second. second. Name? Who did the second? Bitch. Roll call, please. Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Webb. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. 
Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 72, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 72 is finally passed. Bill Number 73, introduced by Council Member Webb. I move for final passage of Bill Number 73. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. Roll call, please. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Sorry, I mixed that up. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Webb. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 73, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 73 is finally passed. Bill Number 74, introduced by Council Member Webb. I move for final passage of Bill Number 74. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. Roll call, please. Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Webb. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 74, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 74 is finally passed. Substitute bill number one for bill number 76, introduced by council members Days and Webb. Please hold substitute bill number one for bill number 76. Moving on to resolutions. Madam Chair, we have two resolutions this evening. Um, so the first one that you received this evening uh, is being held. So what was originally labeled resolution two is now resolution number one. Resolution introduced by council members Dunaway and Clancy. Kevin, will you please read the resolution? Yes, ma'am. Resolution, whereas for far too many years, overtime accrued by numerous county departments has caused our entire county budget to be strained, and whereas the council has been made aware of instances of employees abusing the system by taking paid time off, PTO, days, only to take additional work hours at overtime pay rates. And whereas it is the job of the county council to be stewards of taxpayer funds, and it is time to treat overtime as the exception and not the rule by making departments accountable and providing them with the necessary tools to decrease rampant overtime. And whereas we owe it to the people and taxpayers of St. Louis County to hold all departments accountable and to rein in excessive overtime costs. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri as follows. Section one, the St. Louis County Council calls on the council's budget oversight committee to prioritize these deep dive systemic issues and review St. Louis County's overtime policy in order to close loopholes that cost taxpayers money. Section two, the administrative director director shall send certified copies of this resolution to Councilwoman Rita Heard Days, chair of the council budget oversight committee, Chris Ron Howard, budget policy coordinator, Paul Kreidler, budget director, and Sue Daniels, director of personnel. Thank you, Kevin. I move for the adoption of resolution number one. Is there a second? Second. Harder. Discussion, please. Discussion. Councilman Fitch. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I guess the question is for one of the two sponsors. Uh, the council has been made aware of instances of employees abusing the system by taking paid time off days only to take additional work hours at overtime pay rates. I'm, I just would like to know what kind of example uh, do you have uh, to illustrate that comment? So I, I'll take this. Um, I actually, I, I can't give you the names of people, but I have heard in not just one, but a, a few departments, I've heard of instances where this is a common thing in St. Louis County departments where someone will take a PTO day and then um, go work an evening shift at 
time and a half or whatever overtime is. And I and I've heard this since I've come in and I and I just want to investigate whether it is a reality. And if it's because there's a loophole in our overtime policy, I think that's something that we should look to close. And my last question is, are you aware of how the paid time off program works? What that means? Uh, paid time off. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you know, it's a use or lose it. You have to use that time or you lose it. I mean, I do understand that, yes. So if they have to take the time off, but then they take the time off and they're forced to work overtime to fill a shift or in the jail or in the police department or on the street, uh, street uh, uh, the transportation department, what are you suggesting they're doing something improper? I'm suggesting that we should look into it and and, and investigate that question. So the simplest solution to this has always been to properly fund the salary accounts. That way you don't have to have all of this excessive overtime. That's been a complaint of department heads for as long as I can remember. And the county typically shortchanges the salary accounts. So employees in various departments are forced to work overtime to cover those shifts. You can't tell somebody at the jail, guess what? You have to take off tonight. And by the way, nobody's gonna watch this pot of prisoners. So if they would properly fund the salary accounts and fill those positions, there wouldn't be a need for all of this overtime, but they, they choose, county government has always chosen not to do that. So I agree with you that it should be looked into, but I don't think it's proper to say that the employees are abusing the system because they're not, in my opinion. Thank you, Madam Chair, that's all I have. Any further discussion? Seeing on roll call, please. Council Member Harder. Aye to looking into this. Council Member Trakas. As uh, Councilman Fitch stated, uh, I'm going to support this uh, for the purposes of looking into it, but um, I'm not assuming that the county employees have done anything um, amiss. So I will vote for it but um, only to look into the situation. Council Member Clancy. You're on mute, Councilwoman Clancy. We got it all Hi. tonight. <laughs> Aye. Council Member Webb. Excuse me. Council Member Webb, Council Member Fitch. Uh, I will support this resolution, but again, uh, not knowing of any abuse of the system by our employees. So I'll vote aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Madam Chair, on resolution number one, there are six ayes and one absent. Thank you very much. Uh, resolution number one is adopted. Moving on, Madam Chair, again, this was originally labeled Resolution 3. This is Resolution Number 2, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Please read the resolution. Yes, sir. Resolution, whereas Tolby Roach was hired by Bi-State Development, BSD, on November 16th, 2018, and provided a five-year contract at an annual salary of $280,000 a year, and whereas Mr. Roach stated at the news conference called to announce his hiring that, quote, I have three priorities as your president and CEO, and that is security, security, and security, end quote. And whereas since Mr. Roach's installation as president and CEO of BSD, events have occurred on Metrolink trains and stations, and actions were taken by the BSD Board of Commissioners, as follows. February 23rd, 2019, New York-based consultant WSP USA Incorporated submitted recommendations to the BSD Board of Commissioners, including ending the presence of armed public safety officers and contracted security guards. April 15, 2019, a male predator attempted to kidnap a 10-year-old girl at a Metrolink station. May 2, 2019, 12 members of a crime syndicate were indicated for crimes committed at Metrolink stations, including shooting a mother, shielding her children, stomping and beating a passenger, and murdering St. Louis County Public Health Department employee, Craig Lefebvre. May 10, 2019, a man violently assaulted and trapped a woman inside a portable toilet at the North Hanley Metrolink station, 
then toppled the toilet when the woman attempted to call 911. May 22, 2019. A man was murdered on Metrolink near Pagedale. August 4, 2019. A man was shot at the Civic Center Metrolink station. January 9, 2020. A bi-state security guard claimed Metrolink security is inadequate under CEO Talby Roach, saying, quote, this place has not met the security needs for the passengers. There is a big crime problem on the Metrolink, period, end quote. February 26, 2020, law enforcement, BSD, and elected officials signed a new bi-state security agreement, and Talby Roach claimed Metrolink, quote, customers will experience a more cohesive, coordinated approach to security, that will offer an improved transit experience, end quote. July 8, 2020, a man assaulted and stabbed passengers at the Cortex Metrolink stop after they refused to buy drugs. January 31, 2021, Bi-State Security Guard James Cook was murdered at the Del Mar Loop Metrolink station. February 8, 2021, despite the murder of Security Guard James Cook, the BSD Board of Commissioners rejected efforts to rearm security guards. And whereas, Due to failure of security and concerns for public safety, on February 8, 2021, the Missouri House gave preliminary approval to a bill that would authorize passengers to carry guns on bi-state buses and Metrolink trains. And whereas in 2019, ridership declined more than 20% on Metrolink and BSD bus systems over the previous five years. And BSD officials have acknowledged that high profile crimes on or near buses and trains are a reason for that decline. And whereas under current leadership, BSD has failed to deliver on its obligation to the residents of the St. Louis metropolitan area to provide necessary and adequate security on Metrolink trains and stations, resulting in an unsafe and dangerous public transit system. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri, as follows. Section 1, the St. Louis County Council hereby recognizes the need to examine bi-state development's failure to deliver a public transit system that is safe for passengers and personnel. Accordingly, the council will schedule a committee of the whole meeting and request the presence of Mr. Roach and any individuals who have director level managerial responsibility for any facet of Metro Transit security to answer questions related to security on the Metro Transit system. Section two, the administrative director will send certified copies of this resolution to Mr. Roach and to each member of the BSD Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Madam Chair, with uh, your indulgence. For far too long, Bi-State Development Agency has enjoyed what amounts to unbridled control and management of its security and that it is responsible to provide to its users. For far too long, Bi-State has failed to provide the entire St. Louis community with a safe and secure public transit system. For far too long, this council has failed in its responsibility to speak for and protect the residents of St. Louis County and assure that safe and secure transit system that they pay for is provided to them. This resolution merely lists some, but certainly not all, of the miserable failures of bi-state leadership to address, rectify, and eradicate the security problems it has faced and failed to address for literally years. With this in mind, I would hope that this resolution will be unanimously adopted and that bi-state leadership will be required to appear before the council and answer questions concerning the council's rightful concerns. If for some reason this resolution fails to be adopted tonight, then the next murder, the next assault, the next rape, the blood of those victims is on the hands of these council, this council and its members. Thank you, Madam Chair. With that, I move for the adoption of resolution number two. Is there a second? Discussion, please. Is there a second? Oh, excuse me. It's okay. Is there a second? Second, harder. Discussion. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, While I'm aware that there are residents and visitors to our region that do not feel safe on the system, I do think that this resolution oversimplifies the problem and would be akin to Um, talking about violence in our region and blaming the violence in certain parts of St. Louis County and city solely on the police department leadership. Um, So I I am open to having a conversation with bi-state leadership about um, hearing updates to their security plans um, and other updates that are related to that, but I will not be supporting this resolution again because I think that it oversimplifies the problem. Any further discussion? 
Any yeah, sure. uh, Councilman Fitch. I find myself in the rare position of agreeing with Councilwoman Clancy. Um, in, in this particular case, um, I do think that Mr. Roach has taken some significant steps to improve security. It is certainly still a work in progress, but to blame him and existing leadership at, at Metro by state, I think is, is misguided. Uh, absolutely, I'm interested in hearing more about their security plans. And regarding blood on the hands of this council, if we vote no on it, the only blood on the hands are the suspects committing these crimes. It's not these member, the members of this council. So I think that um, there's enough blame to go around. Uh, certainly we need to hold their feet to the fire. I did have a conversation with Mr. Roach today. And one of the things I told him is I would be happy to help him in any manner to with members of Congress to address this federal compact issue where their security are not allowed to have firearms, any weapons on the transit system. That's in federal law. That needs to be changed. Um, I am in favor of them. I've always been in favor of them having uh, firearms. However, if he would tomorrow decide, I'm going to give firearms to these security guards and they shoot and kill someone, even if it's absolutely justified, you know what will happen in a civil court because the federal compact says they can't. So for that purpose, I will have to vote no on this as well. Thank you, Madam. Any, thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Madam Chair, no, if, I may, if I may respond. Yes, you may, Councilman Trakas. Thank you. Um, to say that this resolution oversimplifies um, the issue and the problem couldn't be any plainer or simpler. For literally years and years and years, Bi State has failed to provide a safe and secure transit system. Nothing that's been done in the last three years has done a wit to improve security. In fact, it has gotten worse. That's the simple and plain truth of it. Today, we learned that Bi State is asking for an additional $25 million from the county, in addition to the hundreds of millions it has received and will continue to receive. To, to say that somehow we don't have an obligation and a responsibility to call that leadership in here and, and ask tough questions and get real answers just perpetuates the problem. And we're going to continue to have the same abysmal security that has gone on for years. And I'm, I'm grossly disappointed in this body tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion, Councilman Harder? Madam Chair, um, I agree with Councilman Trakas. I think uh, people that are in charge of these situations need to be held accountable. They need to be brought in to our body and talked to about these issues and for us to give input. Um, I know they have changed a lot of their security policies and procedures. It's not there yet. Um, and we need to know when it's going to get there, wherever there is. And uh, I think they need to be held accountable to us as this board and to the citizens of the region who rely on this transit system to get to work, to get to school, to get to doctors. And it they need to know that when they get on, that should be their last worry, is when they get on this system that they're not going to be um, accosted or raped or shot or whatever. And uh, we need to make sure that that doesn't happen. So I'm in favor of at least the language that says that this, that uh, by state needs to answer and be uh, part of a committee of the whole uh, for this board. So for that, I for that one reason, I will support this. Thank you. Any further discussion? Madam Chair, Thanks. just one Councilman last. Fitch. Thank you. Um, yeah, and by the way, if Councilman Trakis, if you didn't hear me, I said I am in favor of committee of the whole and holding their feet to the fire. And, and if I remember correctly, we have a committee of the whole every year during the budget season just for Metro, for by state. So we certainly will have that opportunity to uh, hold Mr. Roach's feet to the fire. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. No further discussion. Please call the roll. Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Clancy.
Nay. Council Member Webb. Council Member Fitch. No. Council Member Dunaway. No. Council Member Days. No. Madam Chair, on resolution number two, there are two ayes, four noes, and one absent. The um, resolution number two uh, has failed. Uh, let me add for the benefit of this conversation, uh, I serve on the East West Gateway Coordinating Council and we did have uh, a, a brief um, presentation from the security people there, the new security people that we've had. And I did ask at the time if they would be willing to come before this council and do the same. I had planned to do that in January. However, you are aware that we were we had some other issues at that particular time and was not able to get that. Uh, but they have committed to come. I am right now in the process of securing a date and time uh, for them to come to show uh, to tell us what has happened with that, along with the uh, director, uh, Mr. Roach. So please keep your calendars handy. We will be having that very discussion that you're uh, speaking of, even though this resolution failed, we will still have that opportunity for accountability and to request uh, answers to the various questions that many of the members have. So I do appreciate that. Thank you very kindly. Moving on. The unfinished business. Um, unfinished business. Yes, ma'am. Item number one. Please hold on the order of business. That will be the order. Item number two. Please hold on, on the order of business and the same motion for number three, and that will be the order. Moving on to new business. Chair, thank you. We have four prepared orders this evening. Order number one in the matter of the requests of the records manager for permission to destroy certain books, papers, and records of various county departments and offices. I move for the adoption of order number one. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Order number one is adopted. Order number two in the matter of the Director of Revenue's request to transfer all interest in certain real estate bought by him as trustee at the collector's 2009 tax sale. I move for adoption of order number two. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Order number two is adopted. Order number three in the matter of the Director of Revenue's request to transfer all interest in certain real estate, real estate bought by him as trustee at the collector's 2003 and 2007 tax sales. I move for adopting of order number three. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Aye. Motion carries. Order number three is adopted. And our final order this, this evening, order number four, in the matter of donation of various items of equipment for the police department. I move for adoption of order number four. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Order number four is adopted. Are there any announcements, uh, any other business to come before this body at this time? Madam Chair. Councilman Trakis. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, as, as you and the rest of the council is aware, St. Louis County is poised to receive an unprecedented second influx, influx of COVID relief related federal relief funds in the amount of $193 million. Unlike the initial $173.5 million of Relief Act funds, the new funds directed to the county are separate and distinct from federal funds that are earmarked for and that will flow directly to municipalities. As such, the bulk of these new funds must, in my opinion, be directed to and expended for long overdue needs in unincorporated St. Louis County. 
For far too long, unincorporated St. Louis County has been neglected, no more. As concerns District 6, I, I expect relief funds to be appropriated for and devoted to the following, infrastructure and road repair, acquisition and maintenance of so-called paper alleys in Lehman, raising of abandoned and derelict properties, renovation and, imp and improvement of the Kennedy Recreation Center, including necessary repairs and improvements to the golf course and swimming pool, construction and or renovation of the South County Government Center. No doubt there will be additional needs identified, but the foregoing list represents long overdue needs that must take a priority um, with these funds for District 6. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any further discussion? Uh, thank you, Councilman Trakers, for that. Uh, I have been in contact with the county executive and we are looking uh, at my office actually will be sending out um, a communication asking for uh, some time for the council to meet as a whole uh, to look at some of the priorities that are needed in the various districts. Uh, that communication will be coming out probably uh, later this week or early next week uh, so that we can come together and, and look at all the uh, districts, uh, what kinds of priorities there are, and we can present um, our our goals and uh, and uh, wishes to the county executive. So that is part of um, of the process that I'm going to uh, be moving forward. Uh, it's going to be at least probably a two or three hour meeting that we're going to have. And I am in the process of getting a facilitator to uh, help us through that process. So I do appreciate your list that will be added along with everything else that we're trying to put together. So thank you so much for that. Any other comments for the good of the body? Seeing none, I, move, I need I move to, for, to adjourn. Move to adjourn, please. Is there a second? Second fit. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Thank you so much for your time this evening and have a good evening and stay safe. Thank you.